Hey everyone, Charting Man Dan from ChartGuys.com. You know, behind every single video that we put out every single day, there's a wonderful community of traders that we want to invite you to be a part of. Try the free seven-day trial and gain access to our live market broadcasts every morning and afternoon. Interact with hundreds of like-minded traders or take part in one of our dedicated chat rooms, each led by an analyst that's there to answer your questions in real time. Our trial is risk-free with absolutely no commitment or credit card required to experience the TCG community. For those looking for a head start in technical analysis, check out our entries and exits course in the link below in the description. Get up to speed with the fundamentals of TCG technical analysis and experience over five hours of great community driven trading education. Hello everyone, checking back in on the MJ sector and a nice bounce has played out from oversold conditions. We were very, very oversold on hourly timeframes, daily timeframes. And what has stood out from this bounce from the second day is the fact that we got a second day in a row because the sector has obviously been struggling very significantly to put together any kind of real bounce. So at this point, I would call it a real bounce. Absolutely. These gains are really nice from the lows and shorter term traders are locking in their profit today and potentially tomorrow as well as we look for a bit of a pullback. What I'm looking for to happen now is obviously it's the most significant bounce attempt we've had on this pullback. So that would lead me to believe that we are going to consolidate, form a higher low, and then attempt that continuation. If we do get that continuation and, and once we see that higher low form break to higher highs, that does show that the bulls have momentum and that is going to make the reversal more clear, more clear on the weekly time frame. So we did get over the middle Bollinger Band. This is a bearish reversal candlestick after a three-day pop. And that's not surprising. After such a significant move to the upside, we need to see cool off some consolidation. And we'll look for the bulls. The bulls ideal scenario would be to back test and hold this middle Bollinger Band, which is going to be at about 850 tomorrow. And holding that level would show just brief consolidation and then looking for continuation. So our new resistance is 823. And the level I'd be looking at after that would be 843, the high of this candlestick up here, and then up to 883. But on the weekly time frame is what I am concerned about. Again, I'm looking for a longer term position. I'm looking for multiple years. I've got a lot of people that are looking for this as well. And so I'm going to do my best in terms of timing and having it so the uptrend is in play. So the, la the last thing you want to do is you know, tell someone to play and, and have them go in the red early on. So I want the bull momentum there for myself as well. And we're going to be looking for the weekly time frame to start this higher, low, higher, high pattern. And again, we're looking one to three to five to 10 years out. So there's no real rush to anything in terms of not trying to time the bottom and just making sure it's a little bit early for me, just timing wise compared to 2018. I know we can start going up long before that, but just logically, I would anticipate that a lack of catalyst and, you know, we do have WEED's earnings coming out and maybe that will rally the sector a bit. We'll have to see, but it's, it's a long time away. And so I want to be sure that my money can be used elsewhere. The cryptocurrency sector is still very hot. So I'm playing that. So just waiting patiently to get the timing right. So the weekly time frame was a bullish reversal candlestick last week, and we're looking for follow through here. And these exponential resistances have been driving the price to the downside for months. And we're testing them right now. Obviously, just one trading day gone by. This is not weak. This is not strong follow through. That's a weak candlestick. But four more days to go, and the bulls want to form that higher low and higher high by the end of this week to try and close over. Ideal close is over this 830. We'll call it 835 because it is going to adjust as the price approaches it. But 830s, the exponential, the eight period here, close above that level and will confirm the bullish reversal hammer. And there's some solid volume behind that because that was the final push for now, the final push by the bears to the downside and then the bulls buying that dip. So you can see it was the highest volume we saw in a month. But we need that follow through and confirmation to believe it's up to the bulls to prove us. We can't give any benefit of the doubt to these bulls. They have to prove to us that they're showing back up and taking this trend back. So APH seeing the same thing. And closing over the middle Bollinger Band, resistance here is going to be 570. There's not as clear a bearish reversal candlestick, but there is profit taking in that upper wick. We could still see follow through tomorrow. With the shape of this candlestick, there's definitely not too far to go from where we close to that high. So that is certainly possible. That level is 570, and the next level that we want to be looking at is 597. And whenever I'm picking out a level where we don't have a clear resistance point on this kind of just slow and steady slope, I'm looking at a, a day where the bulls made a push and were very clearly set back by the bears. And so on these days where we have a, a bull move and then a, a 
a close down near the low of the day. That tells me that the bears were very strong against that resistance. So that's the the one level that I'll pick out there. And then I'll look up here at 629. So APH on the weekly time frame, bullish reversal hammer trying to be confirmed. Same story with the exponential resistance and a much stronger weekly chart with that higher low. And I should say that higher high. And now trying to form, we clearly broke the very strong uptrend, but we still have an overall long-term uptrend here that is a bit more bullish than WEED, which has taken out a lot more support. So the low on this pullback, we hit back on the end of October 2016 and on APH on this move we hit back December 2016 so a couple month difference back in October 2016 we were down here on APH in the 350s 360s so Still a stronger chart on the weekly time frame and a lead bull, technically speaking. ACB, much weaker bounce. Profit taking yesterday, bearish reversal candlestick, bearish day today, more profit taking. And if we break this higher low pattern over the past couple of days with a break of 219 tomorrow, we're going to look and pull back. We didn't even test the middle Bollinger Band. So very clearly, this is a much weaker chart than those other two. And we haven't even made it back to anywhere near the ground that we were at because of the significant dump to the downside. So a lot weaker here on ACB. Weekly time frame has shifted this higher low pattern, a lot less history to be going off here, but we are now looking for lower highs and lower lows. It was a bullish reversal doji on the weekly, but again, no confirmation at this point or no follow through. EMC, same story. After the all out dump hitting all time lows, no support down there. Look at all these gap downs. The bears were just running with it very easily. And this bounce really not doing much. We're taking back Let's see, we bounced one, two, three, four, five days attempting here, and we're taking back just the final three bear days of this drop. So same story with ACB, not even close to the 20-period moving average, bearish and profit-taking going on today, oversold bounce at this point, but nowhere near the strength of WEED and APH comparatively. EMC is off of all-time lows, bullish reversal hammer off moving average support, but again, so much needs to be done before this becomes an uptrend on the weekly time frame. If I were looking to get into EMC, I'd be very comfortable waiting another two months with the way that this is playing out, because it's the same thing. We're going to have to see higher lows and higher highs begin to develop, and we're not even testing X exponential resistance on the weekly time frame. MJN, same story. Four days of a bounce and we couldn't even get the last bearish day. So I compare the bounces to how much downside we saw. This is a bear flag pattern still, rejecting from the 200-day moving average of 187. As long as these exponential moving averages stay resistant and we can't get over those levels, the potential is there for a bear flag. And if I were going to draw a textbook bear flag chart, this would be it. And we're just waiting to see if we get that continuation to the downside, as it usually indicates at 160. That is the most likely scenario. And that would have us test this 50-week moving average support again of 166. Very weak chart. But again, overall, stronger than WEED with where we are coming from, where our lows from this pullback are hitting back in late December. If we were back where we were at in October, we'd be down at 80 cents. So in terms of giving back, giving back what we had seen to the upside, not seeing the same weakness as WEED longer term. SPRWF, slow and steady to the downside, very, very weak bounce attempt, and we're looking down at support of 934. Losing $1 psychological support was a big blow to the bulls, looking down at 893 after that. But that psychological level, if you can't hold that, you're now back to a penny stock and clearly weak here, but we do have some, some support to be watching 89. If we were to break 89, that would be a significant bear break. Next level I'd be looking down to is 77. Now, I don't know the specifics. I have not done the research on the fundamentals of SPRWF, but just given my experience in penny stocks and and seeing the same psychology in terms of what's going on and everybody waiting for news and all that, it's just a little bit of a red flag in terms of that. And obviously it could be absolutely a fully legitimate company and the license will come and it will, in my opinion, not be as significant a pop as everybody thinks because everybody already anticipates the news and is getting in before the event. And so I just want to give a little bit of caution that if this keeps getting dragged, drug out, dragged out, drug one of those out, then it's just something that we want to avoid. If we break down and lose 89 cents and then just start this slow bleed to the downside, and I don't want to compare it to AC OWCP because obviously fundamentally they're very different, but it's just a slow bleed where everybody's waiting for something, some kind of catalyst, and it just doesn't come. So that's my word of caution. Absolutely, it could come. If you've done your research and you're confident, that's great. I have not done the research, but just seeing how it's playing out. I've seen this story dozens and dozens of times, granted with penny stocks and illegitimate companies, but it the psychology is somewhat the same. So We'll see when that license does come. I'm very interested to see what the reaction is going to be, just how much upside we do see. And I appreciate you watching. We'll continue to check back in. I actually want to look at HMMJ here for a moment. And there is absolutely 
no strength here and very patient on that. So when I'm suggesting to people that are not really familiar and active in the space, I do suggest this ETF because it, you know, broadens risk a little bit. You don't have to do the individual research in the company. So if someone's just looking for some easy information, and I think, you know, the MJ sector in Canada is going to be great in 2018, then I will refer them to this, but I would not do so without higher lows and higher highs and exponential support. So same thing, probably a couple months away here on HMMJ. So that's what we got. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry for the delays on the video. Been at the beach and getting off the screen and getting overwhelmed in the process. Have a great night and we'll see you soon.